Alright, so one. Oh, two. Three. Uh, of the, the Allegro. One on top. Okay, got it. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Hi, we're the Carps. I'm Margie. And I'm Benjamin. And we are... <laughs> I'm sorry. That's correct. We, we are Creative Lexington. Lexington. My mom had been a nurse, and my dad was a physics professor, um, but they both loved the arts very much. There was always music on the stereo at home. My father could um, identify any classical tune in three or four notes, drove us crazy, flipping off the car radio and asking us what it was. I don't think they particularly wanted their kids to be uh, professional musicians, but they encouraged us to, to play. The Lexington Philharmonic is what would be termed a regional orchestra. No one who plays in the Lexington Philharmonic earns their living playing in the Lexington Philharmonic. I'm principal cello of the Lexington Phil. And I'm one of the two assistant concertmasters. Most professional musicians know they want to do it as a career very early, and I didn't. Um, and I had the luxury of going to college and not thinking of it as a place where I needed to learn a, a trade, but just learn. I gained confidence, I learned how to play my instrument, and I met Margie. As we would play in the orchestras, I could see him across the stage, and that was really fun. He could kind of connect that way. Our two boys have gone with us to music festivals their entire lives. We also rehearsed here a lot uh, when they were infants and growing up, so they might go to sleep hearing a bar talk quartet or Beethoven quartet, but we never dreamed, honestly, that we would be able to enjoy a family quartet. We both had teachers who impressed on us that we had a duty as performers to teach. We help them try to find their passion, even if it's not music. And I think both of us have struggled. We were not child prodigies. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I think that has made us good teachers yeah. because we know what it's like to have to rework something or to not have something come easily. I think it was our first year here. There was a budget shortfall and they were going to address it by cutting music programs. And our then department chair asked us to go to meetings that were being held at the high schools and voice our opinions. We didn't get a chance to speak. Parents were up in arms. There were parents who no longer had kids in the public schools who demanded to speak and say, you cannot take this away. You have no idea what it did for our children. It was amazing yeah. seeing that. We knew what a special community yeah. we had come to. I do sometimes feel that there's a push for the kids to study music because of what it does for the resume. Yeah. Instead of that there's this intrinsic value that every human being can get from studying an art form. Everything is so quick today. Studying music is something that does not happen quickly. It's improvement over time. Going through a process of working on something steadily is a really important thing to know how to do. I think it's easy to take an arts organization for granted, that it will be there, and that when your kids want to go to a concert, it will be there. Um, but it is a really important part of this community. If you knew everybody's background, how much they have worked and how much they've given to their art, you know, all over Lexington and all the different arts. It's an incredible depth. Life in, in music can be really tough and we feel very, very fortunate that Lexington, um, the Philharmonic, the University of Kentucky, that you know, we've been able to have a really nice life here. Please support your local arts. 
We are Creative Lexington. No sound there at the end. That was so funny.